Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make this poinsettia bead kumahima bracelet. And it looks like this. So you have your nice flowers going all the way along there with your random leaves along each one. And the back side here I've just made plain so you're not going to have any of those long magatama sticking into your skin. It's going to be nice and comfortable to wear. So this is what it's going to look like. A nice Christmassy pattern on it. So if you want to learn how to make this, then keep watching. So these are the things that we'll need. Now we need a round kumahima disc here first of all, because we're making a round braid. And then as for the beads, I have a few different ones here. So because we're using some different kinds of bead, I'm using some long magatama beads here. So I have some green ones, and then the red ones here, they're both long magatamas. And these are what's going to create the main part of the poinsettias. Then I have some regular rounds in two different colours, and these are four millimetre or six sews and seed bead size. I have the yellow ones. These are just going to be the center of each poinsettia. And then the white ones here are going to be the main background color, really. So, because I've also got the white ones as a background color, what I've done is the card that I'm using here is a white card. This is Eslon, a 0.4 mil thickness. And it's just using that white color, just make sure that if any card is kind of showing here and there, you won't really be able to see it, because I'm using that light background as well. And then we have the findings, so Kumihimo ends, extended chain clasp, and jump rings. So let's get it all together, and let's get started. So to get our cards ready so we can start making the bracelet, what I've done is cut four lengths of my Eslon here, of about one meter each. And then I've made sure all the ends are together. And then I've put them together here, doubled over all the cards, and put the ends together to find the middle of them, so up here. And then I just tied a regular knot just to keep all the cords together. And also so I know this is the midpoint, we can use that to attach the disc. And I've just attached a scrap piece of wire here just to help be able to pull it through the disc. You can attach whatever you want to, and you can also work with a weight if you want to. So by doing this as well, we have the original four cords now turned into eight working lengths that we're going to be making our eight strand Kumahimo braid on the disc with. So I've then attached my cards here onto my disc. So I just took that knot with the piece of wire that I put down through the middle, so that's coming up towards the back. And then I distributed my cards here, so I'm not worrying about the numbers, I'm just looking at the dots really for guideline. So I put two cards around each side of every dot there. So they're distributed like this. And then the first thing I want to do before we start adding in any of the beads, I just want to do a little section of braid here with just the cord, just to have kind of a beginning point, and we can also use that to finish it off at the end. So we just want to start a regular 8 strand Kamehameha braid here. So I take my top left one, bring that across the middle and down, and stay on the left side of the bottom pair. And then I take my bottom right one and bring it across the middle, up, and stay on the right side of the top there. Turn your disc a quarter so you get to the next pairs that you haven't used. And with an eight strand braid here, I just want to say it doesn't matter what direction you turn it in because we only have these eight lengths of cord. It's only if you have more lengths you'll need to worry about what direction you're turning your disc. But you then just do the same thing. Take the top left one, bring it down, stay on the left side, the bottom right one, and bring it up and stay on the right side. And you just keep doing this until we have about one to two centimeters of braid. So we now have this little section of braid coming out of the back. So we are now ready to start adding in the beads. So this is then how we need to add all the beads to all the lengths of cord here to achieve that final look on the pattern that we want. Now I'm not gonna go through the setup here in too much detail. I'm just gonna be mentioning a few things that you need to look out for. But what I have done is taken a picture of this whole setup, so the way the beads need to be added, and I put that picture on my website. So if you need to have a bit more detail, look at exactly how the beads are sitting and where to place them, you can go and have a look at that and that might be helpful for you. So at a first glance here, it might look kind of a bit random how you add the beads, but when you look at it, there is actually an overall pattern to it. The only thing that's breaking up that pattern are all the long magatamas in the green colour here. The rest is actually in a pattern and that's because the flowers themselves the place in a specific place throughout the braid. The only thing that's kind of random in a way throughout the braid are all the leaves that are going around the flowers. So that's why they're kind of placed in a random way compared to the actual pattern. So as you can see up here, these two have got a clear pattern to them. Where we have two white, two of the red long megatema, two white, two of the red long megatemas, and so on on both of them. So that's a pattern there. 
we have patterns on all the others as well actually so if we just basically ignore the green ones for now and then for instance in this one this pattern would be three white one red magatema three white one red one red magatema and then we start with the greens but if we ignore the greens and replace them with the white ones because that would be the background color then that would be the continuous pattern there and then in between we just added a few green long magatemas just placing them where we want the leaves for the flowers to be and it's the same principle with the rest of them here so for instance these two down here if we didn't have the green magatemas on there for the leaves these would just be completely white because that's the background colour and then for instance the yellow one here the ones with the yellow ones that are the centre of the flower they would also just have the pattern of the white ones three white one yellow three white one yellow so we just placed the green low magatemus there wherever we wanted the flowers the leaves for the flowers to be rather but the rest is actually the pattern in itself so the main thing to look out for when you're adding your beads here is really the long magatemus because what you'll find is the hole that they have and the shape of the beads themselves they'll be kind of at an angle either pointing one way or another way so that's why it's important to have a look what way to add them to your lengths of cord for instance up here you can see quite clearly we have two magatemas sat next to each other the whole way down but they're actually kind of opposite from each other so pointing in opposite directions and that's all depending on how you add them onto your cord so you want to make sure of that that you're adding them all in the right direction so sometimes like down here for instance on this one the outer one they're pointing upwards and the inner one they're pointing downwards so this is something you want to keep an eye on so you add them correctly because otherwise the flowers and the leaves won't look quite right the other thing I'm going to say is how you usually work with your disc when you're making your braid now in my case I always take my top left one bring that down then my bottom right one and bring that up if you do the same as me or if you start with the bottom right one so either the top left or the bottom right it doesn't matter you want to add your beads all the same way as I've showed you here whereas if you usually start from your top right or your bottom left then you need to just add them a bit differently so basically imagine that you have a mirror in front of your disc and then you need to add all your beads in that mirror image so in other words that means the top two ones will swap places so that means how you add your beads on the one that's on my left side all those beads will be on the right side and the other way around the bottom two will swap places and then the side ones the top ones on each side have to swap over the middle of the disc so your right one on the top goes over to the left one on the top and the same the left top one goes over to the right top and the same with the bottom ones they swap over the middle as well so that's just something to keep in mind as well you can either choose to just add them the same way as me and either start from the top left or the bottom right or put them on in that mirror image if you feel more comfortable working from either the top right or the bottom left that's completely up to you but you need to make sure to do that in order to achieve the right pattern so now that we have all that in order and we've added all the beads in the correct way now what we need to do is continue making the braid but then start adding the beads into it so we just want to pick up the disc here and then continue with the regular eight strand braid same as we've been doing the only difference is now every time we loosen a cord here, so again I take my top left one, we also want to release the very first bead, so just release one bead as you're releasing the cord, let the bead drop down in the middle there, and then in the middle you want to just make sure that the bead sits underneath all the cords there, if it doesn't automatically make sure to tuck it in, and then place it back in, take your bottom right one, and as you're releasing the cord, you want to release one bead as well. Now the beginning here is always kind of the trickiest just because everything is still a bit loose but once you have one or two layers of beads it becomes much easier. And then turn your disc for the next pair and like I said previously it's the same principle when it's an eight strand braid it doesn't matter what direction you turn your disc in because we'll go to the same pair no matter what direction we're turning it in but I just think it is a good habit just to make sure to go in the same direction because if you're going to make other braids as well it's just a good habit to have but it's not too crucial in this one so we just keep releasing one bead every time we release one cord and then it's going to build up here now I also have a tutorial where I go into more detail about how to do a basic beaded kumahima braid so if you haven't really done this before I recommend that you have a look at that and I'm going to put a link to that in the description box below so you can have a look there but otherwise we just need to keep adding in our beads one at a time until we run out 
and then we'll build up our pattern. So I've now added in all my beads here, so I've kept going, as you can see I have none left. So now what we need to do is just like in the beginning, we had this little section of braid without the beads. We need to do the same now. So we just want to continue again braiding just with a cord. And then what you'll find is here at the top where you have your last beads, it'll naturally singe in and become like a small braid again with just the cord. And it's the same principle, you want to have about the same length as you do at the beginning, so about one to two centimeters of this. So now that we've done that, what we need to do is just secure this end in place so we can take the whole braid off the board. So what I like to do is just, I start with the, not the last pair that I just used, so these two. What I want to start with are the other ones here. So I'm going to take cords that are diagonally opposite each other and then take them over the middle and tie a regular knot and then tighten that all the way down to my braid ends. Place them back in, get them out of the way. Grab the other one from the same pair, diagonally opposite each other, tie your knot over the middle, and then move on to the other ones. Same thing all the way around. And this is going to secure the end nicely in place so we can take it off the board without worrying about the end here coming undone. And it also doesn't leave it too bulky at the end for finishing it off. So there we go. Last one. So I can now take it off the board completely. And then you'll find we now have our braid done with a nice pattern on. So then this is what it looks like. So you have your nice poinsettias there with the green leaves as well. Not in the same place in every one, but kind of placed on there a bit randomly. And then the braid looks like this and you have a nice flat back so that's not going to irritate you with the long rigatama sticking out against your skin or something. So all that's left to do now is finish off the ends here. So just remove the wire and then use your kumihimo ends to finish that off. Now I have a tutorial that already shows how to do that, so you can have a look at that one if you need to. So once you've then added your findings, so your clasp and extended chain if that's what you're using, then here you have your finished bracelet with your nice poinsettias on it. So this is what it looks like by following that pattern. So it's going to make a nice bracelet. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this cherry blossom beaded kumihimo bracelet and it looks like this. So you get your cherry blossoms going all the way around with your little leaves on them, different leaves on each one and then the flowers on the outside of the bracelet here so it'll look like this when you're wearing it. So if you want to learn how to make this then keep watching. So here are the things that we'll need. Now because we're making a round braid we'll need a round kumihimo disc for this.